All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless me here talking real music in real time for a few real people out there just like you and just like me. All right, so uh, before I get going on the video itself here, this is Perticone, Underdog, or just Perticone, Stuff in the Basement, um, music from the great country of Italy, my home country. Yeah, at least some of my ancestors and pretty much every form of American style music is on this thing. Melodic rock, AOR, um, West Coast sounding stuff. The tune Blame It On Me has this great saxophone part in it and it just makes you long for the good old days. And yeah, I'm stuck in the good old days. That's the kind of music I like. So, um, you know, forgive me, and it's just what I like to listen to. And maybe you might too, so check it out, um, courtesy of Lion's Pride Music. So uh, I'm definitely exploring new record labels, and uh, I'm having a good time. It's a lot of fun. You can just stream it. That's what everyone says. Hey, just stream it, you know. Um, it wasn't an easy CD to acquire. Um, <laughs> uh, you can purchase one, but it's, it's you know, I would have to give you a lot of instructions on how to do it, but there is a way to order one from Germany or Switzerland or somewhere. Uh, anyway, another guy with a new CD out, by the way, is Steve Audjeri. I think it's called Seven Ways to Sunday or something like that. That's the title. I've already forgotten it. I'm sorry, Steve. I did do a video about it. It's pretty impressive. It might be actually a better album than Journey's Freedom album. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, material wise, maybe, maybe not, but production wise, yeah. I mean, it's really well produced and Steve Jerry sounds great on it. And now Steve is uh, doing interviews uh, with various media outlets, classic rock radio stations, <laughs> classic rock stations, by the way, <clears throat> that never played anything with Steve Jerry on it. Maybe one time in what 2001 they might have given something off of the arrival album a spin uh before they moved on to you know whatever they were i was going to say sound garden but i think they were over by then but they would have just moved on to you know the dark rock of the day and where do you put journey you know do you put them on adult contemporary you can't put them on rock stations uh even back in 2001 which seems like a lifetime ago. Uh, anyway, Steve Jerry is basically telling interviewers um, that he wouldn't go back to Journey if they gave him a call and said, hey, Steve, Arnell just left and we were wondering, would you be willing to come back? Now, my personal opinion on this is they probably should call Jeff Scott Soto first. Because um, number one, I think Jeff is a bit more rugged uh, vocally. And I'm not saying in the beginning that Steve Ogieri couldn't be Journey's lead singer, but he had a fairly short run. You may think, oh, it was like seven years. Well, yeah, but it, I mean, it really kicked into gear after Arrival came out and then not too long after Generations uh, came out, that's when things really went south very, very quickly for Steve Ogieri. And he even admits it, by the way. Uh, he, he does say something to this interviewer, who I believe is at a classic rock station, a station that never played Steve Ogieri, played a lot of Steve Perry. And by the way, that station probably never played any Journey music with Arnel Pineda on it as well. Uh, I know some AC radio stations were playing uh, some stuff off of uh, Revelation when that came out, but what, 14, 15 years ago now? So anyway, uh, he does say, I can't physically do this. In other words, he's not up to uh, being the singer in Journey. He said, I would hate to turn my back on one or the other. And he's talking about <laughs> the two camps, either the Neil camp or the John camp. Uh, or the Arnell camp, which I think is the same as the John camp. Anyway, he says, I'm content doing what I'm doing. 
See, here's how uh, Steve uh, Jerry does this. He does a few of these county fair events. He probably does some small venues. He's probably on a ticket with other guys from his time period and they can bill it as a journey Asia event, you know, and they have, you know, maybe Luke Graham is there. Um, he doesn't do a ton of touring but he goes out there a few times and hopefully he's making some money doing it. You know, one thing about Steve Ajeri is he was able to take all of that journey stuff with him. Like, hey, yeah, you can say Steve Ajeri and the music of journey and people were okay, or at least former journey lead singer, Steve Ajeri. And I think that has um, worked pretty well. It helps him sell tickets. And I think, um, that's probably the least those guys could have done for Steve Ah Jerry. Um, it's sad how that all ended. You had Jeff Scott Soto and Arnell Pineda, and now, you know, it doesn't seem as though Arnell is doing all that well in the current environment. And I don't necessarily blame him for that. I mean, I do think he should still be grateful, and I think he should just ride this out. He should just ride it out. I know it's a difficult situation. I know through all of this too, people are starting to talk about Steve Perry again, which can't be um, encouraging for Arnell to hear all this stuff. But uh, Steve Ajeri says he greatly respects Arnell and his former bandmates. Uh, so he didn't want to turn his back on either side. The rocker also believes he doesn't have the physical energy to take the stage one day after the other so he wishes the current lineup uh, to work things out and so they can continue being journey. I think that's good advice. And I think uh, I, it's good. You know what's good to hear? Uh, Jerry says, look, I can't do this. I'm going to tell you I can't do it. I don't want to blow my voice out. He says he could probably do one or two gigs, but on the third one, he'd be wondering if, you know, his voice was going to make it, you know, and so... There was permanent damage. Uh, Steve Ajeri is now into his 60s, and it's one thing to put out a studio album and to get into a, a room and record music over a fairly long period of time. I think the album spans a number of years, and it's really well done. Uh, it's a very thoughtful album, and Steve does sound good on it. And so, yeah, I would go and check it out for sure. Um, but people asking him about journey with the current problems uh it's just i guess refreshing to hear somebody just tell the truth and say look i don't want to get in the middle of this number one uh and number two i hope these guys um work things out number three if they were ever to ask me i wouldn't be able to do this so um i think they should ask jeff scott soto if something goes wrong with arnell it's jss uh, some people would say, give Hugo a call from Voyage, maybe. I don't know. They might just continue because Dean is there and Jason is there. And I think that might have been the backup plan initially to have those two guys there. So we'll see what happens, folks. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what, today is Super Bowl Sunday. You're not going to see anybody any good at halftime. So this is your halftime entertainment today, all right? So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, not brought to you by Pfizer, but brought to you by uh, this here, <laughs> Perticone, Stuff in the Basement. Um, great music, and you should check it out because, you know what, a lot of this music just goes under the radar. People thank me all the time. They say, hey, man, uh, your recommendations like nine, nine times out of ten, which is really high uh, because I don't even like what I recommend nine times out of ten, so that's really good. Um, but yeah, check it out if you have a chance. And again, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you can help me out over on YouTube, you can do memberships there, uh, Patreon, a dollar a month, two bucks a month, whatever you can afford to help the channel. And I'll be back soon. So uh, stand by for more great, amazing content from yours truly.